Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is gonna be a complete US fall forecast. Um, so I already made one earlier on, but it seemed like people did not um, get notifications or something. It just didn't uh, get a lot of views for some reason. And I feel like, and I've been getting a lot of comments asking, you know, when are you gonna upload your winter or fall outlook? So, <clears throat> so I decided to upload it now because it seems like many people did not get the um, video. So I will re do a re-upload kind of an updated fall outlook, but I'll I'll just keep it as like kind of like part one. I won't really put in like part two. I'll just you know keep it um, as like it was part one because again it seemed like people didn't get. Uh, the for some reason they didn't get the notification so while we're at it uh, consider subscribing to this channel i do more outlooks do answering questions about weather like who will see a snowy fall who will see a snowy winter it's just a, a weather channel filled with fun and we do a lot of fun things on here we do winter storm updates we do hurricane updates if there's a major one um, I do all sorts of things, so really do consider subscribing. So first off, we're going to be looking at uh, the uh, the ENSO, the ENSO, uh, the past previous events. You could see that last year, uh, around this time when I was making my fallout, like it was a neutral, but then we went into an El Nino, and it was supposed to be an El Nino by August, well, it didn't... Um, really develop until October, and while we were in October, it didn't really show um as being an el nino until we kind of went into november and then they said it was already an el nino in october it was a very weird pattern but nevertheless it was a weak el nino um and we still here in chicago got one of the snowy uh, not snowy it's one of the coldest winters snowy was as well but it was one of the coldest winters across the midwest minneapolis i think had one of its snowiest winters so uh goes to show you just because it's an el nino does not mean that we will not be looking at a sn uh, heavy snow but this year you could see that the last months were still an el nino but we are going into we are be going into a neutral pattern so this was the enzo outlook as of last uh, fall outlook you could see this is what i had and it was a probability of an el nino going down and um, they say it's el nino's favorite to continue but nearing 50 50 chances and i was like remember i was like yeah i think a neutral will occur and we, you could see they updated this the 11th of july and now an enzo neutral neutral is favored to emerge in the next season and then continue through the northern hemisphere fall and winter so you could see uh, september august uh, october november december january still an all in neutral some people are saying Alania would develop. Um, right now, I'm not seeing that. Uh, the, the, you may be, I think people are looking at the sea surface temperature anomalies and they're, they're getting misguided by the uh, anomalies thinking that there's going to be a La Nina. Right now, there's no signs really of an La Nina forming. It looks more of a, uh, a neutral pattern. Uh, La Nina, not that, no, not that uh, confident about that at all. Um, you can see that this, these are the model outlooks that uh, were of last time's last fall outlook. Um, this is what I had last time, and you can see they were all showing an El Nino, a weak El Nino, but some were showing a neutral. And now with the updated version, you could see that you could see that all of them, not all of them, but quite a good chunk of them are showing a neutral pattern. You could see not even one, one is showing a La Nina. Seriously, the chances of a La Nina are very low. And um, if you think there's gonna be a La Nina, um, I just don't think you're right. And many people, many meteorologists agree with me that uh, there's going to be a neutral pattern. La Nina does not look, as of now, uh, to occur. And you can see that um, there's still actually quite a few models. The statistical average is actually still showing a weak El Nino. So you could see that it's more of between an El Nino and a neutral than a neutral La Nina. Forget about a La Nina. I mean, at this point, it's so unlikely, at least for the fall. Fall, there almost will definitely not be a La Nina. Maybe for the winter, but it does not seem likely. You could see that uh, the average of their dynamical models, thick red line, predicts Enzo neutral to the northern hemisphere. Um, the average of the statistical models, thick green line predicts a weak El Nino to continue into northern hemisphere winter. So you can see it's between a neutral and a weak El Nino. It's not really in between um, a uh, a La Nina at all. I don't know where you guys are getting this from. I've, I've got a couple of comments saying that a La Nina is occurring. I don't think so. Um, but I do think a neutral will occur, not really an El Nino. But you can see this is a weak to moderate El Nino impacts in case a weak to moderate El, um, El Nino does occur. Um, you could see that it's stormy across the east. 
not necessarily uh, snowy because it needs to be lined up with this cold. You can see that there's this northern branch of this jet stream and it dives down into the U.S. However, if this uh, northern branch is just a little bit further to the north riding along somewhere like this and there is a storm riding up right there and but there's too much warm air, it will most likely be rain and a little bit snow for interior parts of New England. However, if this cold lines up with a storm that comes from a southern branch and ridges right there, it could lead to quite a bit of of snow. That's why uh, last year we did not have quite a bit of snow across the northeast. However, the winter prior to that uh, uh, it was very snowy. I mean, we had four nor'easters in a matter of, matter of 20 days. So, uh, yeah, that was it was one of it was a pretty record breaking year. 2017, 2018, 2016, 2017 um, was also I think above average for New York City and many states like that. Except people have got so used to seeing an above average above average winter that when they finally see an average winter, they think it's below average, and that's a little bit frustrating because I'm getting comments saying, "Oh, you know, the Northeast has been so snowless lately. They they've had one year below average so far in out of the past seven years." Um, yeah, that's that's not something to be complaining about. And if you look at the jet stream, you could see there could be also potentially some wetter conditions across um, California. And uh, if we go to a neutral pattern, you can see that the wetter conditions across California aren't there because the Pacific jet stream goes a little bit further to the north and it's more likely to be centered across the northwest. And the subtropical jet stream goes a little bit further to the south. So uh, we could be looking... At California is going to be hard to say this year. You could either be, I could either seeing it wet and a little bit warmer, or completely wet, or completely you know wet and uh, I think it's going to be wet and warmer, but it also could be just dry and hot with no precip. Those are the two possibilities. But notice how with the Enzo neutral, which is I think what's going to happen, the um, the jet stream dips way further to the south, and with a weak to moderate El Nino typically um, goes a little bit further to the south, and that's why it allows it allows uh, often to get these big storms to ride up and uh, if since there's more cold air, more, more snow occurs with these snow systems. So you can see that um, this is a fall outlook, right? And this is Enzo neutral winter pattern. So um, you can see that there's a little bit difference because this is a fall outlook and this is the winter pattern. So um, the weak to moderate El Nino on winter typically is what plays out for fall. Um, usually as well, but the neutral is a little bit different. The Enzo neutral winter pattern is a little bit different for fall. So I've made an analog of all the falls um, that have been uh, neutral. And you can see that still, uh, this is August through November of a bunch of neutral fall years. And you can see 1950, 1952, and the most recent one was, I think, 2013, right there. 2013, 2014. You can see that, in general, there was a trend for cooler temperatures across the eastern side of the country and uh, some anomalies were actually fairly significant and you can see this is through the whole span of fall August through November August technically isn't fall but I don't know why I included it in here um, it's not like if it was like the game changer to make this blue or anything like that it's not biased August was just there because it was an accident and if you took away August it would still be blue and below average so uh, you can notice how the West is also a little bit above average but uh, if we look at now each individual month you can see August was below average for a good chunk of the country not just the East also the Northwest possibly a little bit warmer for the Northeast maybe um, I think we could be looking at a similar pattern this August but that's not set in stone yet I mean we could still see a pretty sharp uh, contrast if a week to moderate El Nino decides to um, you know form rather than rather than a neutral if we look at September, you can see it's also pretty chilly, um, but now it's more centered across the eastern part of the country, and notice how the northeast gets into the cool weather. Southeast also fairly chilly, and notice how the northwest and um, the Rockies and down into Texas Plains, uh, it's, it's a little bit above average. Nothing uh, remarkable though, but a little bit warmer. And now we go into October. This one seems like the least cool out of all these months. Um, and the most warm for uh, the West, you can see fairly warm. It's a big area, and then the coolness in the East kind of winds down. So not as uh, cool, but again, this this winter could be different. This is just an analog year of historical winters in the past. So this does not necessarily mean that you know each month will be like this. I'm just showing you what a typical fall neutral pattern looks like. And again, we could be even looking at a completely different Enzo with a weak to moderate El Nino forming. So we will just have to see. But at this point, I do think the neutral is the most likely. 
if you go to November, uh, notice how this air right here in October is right there. In November, it kind of dives down into the south, and you can see it's much cooler across now the center part of the country, and uh, a little bit not as warm. I mean, you can see across the west, just a little small area. Notice how it's the northwest also gets in onto these colder, cooler conditions. So I don't think that this necessarily will mean a, a warm uh, winter for the northwest. I think. Uh, it will be, because uh, if you go back several slides, notice how it, it kind of left out the, the west here with no cool weather. I think if there is, you know, a possibility of a week to a uh, moderate El Nino or a weak El Nino mixed kind of with a neutral pattern, I think the northwest will get in on some of those cool conditions as well. And this is uh, November, because people are always asking me what do I think in terms of the snowiness, and obviously the snow in fall only usually occurs in November in great amounts. Yes, it does snow in October and September for some parts of the United States, but it's only small locations. But if we were to talk about chilly conditions for November, um, you know, then that would increase the snow amounts, but notice how it's kind of below average in terms of precipitation across these areas, across the northwest as well. So, uh, we'll just have to see. This is not, you know, guaranteed that this will happen, but it's just showing us what happened in the past with these previous winters. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the winters are pretty snowy, it seems, but uh, the falls, or at least November, doesn't seem to be snow-filled. But again, it does not take, I mean, these anomalies are not too big they're what is this negative one uh, millimeters per day so that's not a huge contrast that's a little bit uh drier but if there were still you know if there was still cold weather and just one storm system it could still dump above average snow across several portions of the u.s so um now let's go on into my final uh, forecast and let's see what i have to say so um Actually, I still have one more thing to show you. Okay, I didn't even know about this. So, I forgot about it. So, March through May, um, I basically found uh, historical springs that were as cool and chilly as this spring. So, this spring looked pretty similar to what we have here. This is a bunch of springs that were very chilly, and this spring was very chilly as well for much of the northern country. And then I wanted to see what their falls looked like of those chilly springs. And you could see that the, the November, at least, portion of that fall of those springs were fairly chilly as well. So there's quite a good indication showing that we will be looking at a chilly fall and uh, possibly winter as well. So now my final, um, my this is my uh, temperature outlook. I think it could be, you know, pretty confident it will be below average across these areas. Less confidence in this, slightly below average. And then in this light blue, um, I think it may be just average, but maybe a bit cooler as um, if the pattern, um, you know, trends towards a bit cooler but mainly if you live in just this blue and purple it should be um cooler like i'm pretty confident about that but in this light blue it may be average not necessarily cooler so it looks like if you know the blue portion is taking up a lot of this area um i'm not um too confident that this light blue is there so it's just really these two colors also i forgot to put in the uh warm colors in here i think that portions of the south will definitely be warm especially the southwest and the west um, so, you know, don't think that this is completely biased. If you look at uh, the, the precipitation outlook, um, maybe a bit drier across the central part of the country and the northwest. Again, I forgot to put that as well. Um, the northwest may be a little bit drier as well, but I think the center part of the country may be a bit drier, but that, that's a big question mark. Precipitation is really hard to predict, and it's almost, frankly, un impossible sometimes. Uh, temperatures are way more uh, predictable, and you could just do it in a way more you know confident manner now this is my final fallout like this is basically what i think each like the fall will be known for in these areas kind of like the highlights and you can see that i think it maybe it will be warmer across the southwest i'm not too sure this may expand further into the west i have a feeling um but again um some of this cool weather may also expand a little bit further so i think this average area is just basically my area of um I'm not sure, and we'll see what occurs because there's a. It's kind of like that winter or fall battle zone between the uh, the, the cooler and warmer conditions. Here, possibly an early clipper or some sort of storm, maybe a few Arctic attacks or you know fall attacks of cooler air. I you know nothing really particular. I think here will be most memorable for some cool shots throughout fall. Notice how I see here. I put a possible nor'easter, not necessarily like a blockbuster snowstorm. Possibly maybe you know a nor'easter, but with mainly rain and severe thunderstorms that those do occur and maybe some snow in the interior northeast um that is with that weak el nino pattern and a neutral pattern which could lead to some of that 
uh, that storminess. Also notice how uh, it is cooler and wetter across these areas in uh, in in the in the in the southeast kind of including the mid-atlantic cooler weather maybe getting some of that cool air from those uh those cool shots from the north and also getting um a little bit wetter and warmer from this area which i think will be fairly stormy and warmer giving fuel to these nor'easters possibly so that's basically it for today's video guys thank you so much for watching consider subscribing um consider checking out my channel it has a lot of more weather content and i really do appreciate you watching this so Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you all guys on the next episode. See ya. Bye.